the first step, of course, was to reach agreement, that is, uh, uh, which involved a lot of hard work, and it was difficult, I must, must tell you, for both governments. Uh, very difficult negotiations, but we did reach agreement in July uh, 2004, and, uh, sorry, June, July 2005, and then uh, March 2006. Uh, in two stages, we finalized the, the broad contours of an agreement. Uh, that, in turn, uh, required a change in U.S. laws. So we have gone through that second process, that is the approval of the U.S. Congress, and last month, uh, that uh, being signed into law, uh, it's now U.S. law. Uh, just went to sign uh, uh, in uh, last month by President Bush. But uh, the process is not complete because uh, now, because what we have is an enabling legislation which will enable the governments of India and the United States to negotiate what's known as a bilateral uh, nuclear uh, cooperation agreement. Uh, and uh, after that, which, that again will be uh, subject to congressional approval, but it won't be debated in Congress, but it's going to be just a straightforward up or down uh, vote. Uh, and then uh, the third stage after that is to uh, get the concurrence of uh, the 49-member uh, nuclear supplies group, which is a varied uh, group of countries and which operates on the basis of unanimity. Uh, and finally, the negotiation between India and the International Atomic Energy Agency of uh, India-specific safeguards agreement for applying safeguards to India's civil civilian nuclear facilities. So we are at that stage at this moment. Uh, this, uh, as I said, it, uh, we have overcome some difficult stages. Um, we have, uh, uh, as the, you know, the last mile is always the most difficult, we have got difficult negotiations ahead. Uh, but I think with political will and uh, uh, growing recognition of the reality, uh, people will... Uh, I think both governments will show enough political will and resolve to see uh, this agreement through. Uh, when I said uh, realization of the reality, because people, uh, initially there was uh, a great deal, there still is a great deal of anxiety and opposition in India. So I was not present at the signing ceremony in the White House, I was in India because we we were having a parliament, uh, we had a parliament session in which it was a very noisy session of parliament in which uh, there was a lot of opposition ex expressed to this agreement and people felt that too much has been given away for too little and basically we don't, you know, a lot of people which took time for people here to realize that we are not asking for something which we don't have uh, because we were the first country in Asia to have a nuclear reactor, build a reactor reactor on our own. We were one of the first five countries to have what is known as full nuclear fuel cycle activities, starting from mining, fuel fabrication, reactor, and reprocessing, extraction of plutonium, and putting it back into the system. Uh, we also have a track record which people didn't realize, they took it for granted, that there's been no proliferation from India at all, no leakage at all, not a gram of uh, special nuclear material, no technology leakage. Uh, also, it took uh, time for people to realize that uh, uh, that India, forgetting about its past record and its impeccable track record, uh, its vital national security interest is to prevent proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and also in 
combating international terrorism, and that our worst case national security nightmare is a combination of the two. And if you see this in the context of that both in terms of being we India is adjacent to the biggest concentration of terrorists in the world, India is also adjacent to both the biggest sources and destinations of nuclear weapons proliferation. Uh, so that's a broad picture. 